The cats add Foma Budson here with some future footwear for you. There's some interesting shoes coming in 2023. A host of models on the horizon that we have only a few details about at the moment. Today I aim to enlighten and speculate on such models. These are all set to drop in 2023. How exciting. Let's take a step into the future. Before we begin, assist me on my YouTube journey. I'm on a quest to get to 1 million subscribers. I'm going to make it happen. It may take me a while, but it will happen. Help us out by joining the crew by hitting that subscribe button and tinkling the bell of notifications. It's free of charge, don't you know? Also, give that thumbs up button a damn good whack. Not too hard, though. You may damage your equipment. Also, share the video with your running relatives. Danke schön. Today, we delve into the unknown. The shoes that are bubbling away in the saucepan. The footwear just on the fringes. And the midsoles that are just out of mind. Four interesting shoes coming at you in 2023. First up is from Brooks. It's a shoe that looks set to launch in some places very soon. Though I am yet to hear much fanfare and that makes me a little sad. Back in 2020, I reviewed the fantastic Brooks Hyperion Tempo. A wonderful responsive light nimble shoe i remember that blue midsole really did make me think of luke skywalker and his blue milk a smashing super light shoe with a nitro infused dna flash material underfoot now we've got a hyperion max coming at us it's got the same type of midsole material and that makes me happy though a new upper design to hug that foot like a warm cup of tomato soup on a cold winter's day i found the midsole on the hyperion tempo exceptionally good firm yet very propulsive and perhaps one for those with the ed bud build you know what i'm talking about snake like low weight less need for super squash perhaps for those faster training sessions the hyperion max isn't a maxed out cushion shoe though it appears a more lower weight training machine perhaps closer to the hyperion elite model or the lower profile tempo either way it's very exciting to see a new speed shoe coming from brooks they do lots of more cushion sort of everyday shoes but this one's really ringing the bell for me the bell of excitement perfect eight mil drop and a very reasonable stack somewhere between those super shoes and the more traditional early races apparently it's below 210 grams as well 7.4 ounces in the us sample size of 8.5 so i'm hoping for that to be well below 260 grams in my uk size 11. yes the midsole is plateless no it's not absolutely maxed out at 40 millimeters but you need that in every shoe still an eva based foam though a nitro infused one that rubber application on the outsole sure looks good and i'm really keen to experience that hyperion feel again Makes sense. I got really good memories of the foam that they've used here. Back from 2020. I still got them back here in the mind. I can remember a very, very warm summer's day running in those down this country path. Just no one, nothing, no sounds, just my feet hitting the floor. Set to release in spring of 2023 from Brooks, the Hyperion Max. Now, next up is a shoe that I hope releases this year. It's been flashed up on Instagram, various other social media networks quite a few times over the last year. That shoe is the Nike ZoomX Ultrafly Trail. It's kind of like one of those rare Pokemon, you know, it pops up every now and then. Everyone goes, oh, look, there it is. It seemed to be leaked ages ago, but the public are still waiting. It did seem a little odd that they seeded these to influences quite a while back, but nothing else has appeared in terms of possible release. Now that can mean two things that Nike have got some production and fulfillment issues here with this shoe. Perhaps they're waiting to store up enough pairs and they can drop it in a big sort of splash, I suppose. Or that people have tested the shoe out and there are some design changes maybe that they're looking to implement. Maybe those early ones were kind of seen as prototypes or something. It's very rare for Nike to seed those shoes and there to be such a huge delay before they drop. Maybe it's a little bit of both of those things, who knows? As we've found out in the last few years, anything can happen these days. I mean, you had a guy take over as president of the US who'd been in Home Alone 2. I'm still excited to try this shoe out though in 2023, whenever it actually comes out. Oh, look at that Vapor Weave upper. 
Everybody liked that on the original Vaporfly Next Percent release. A minimal tongue there and a protective layer of mesh across the Zoom X to help contain its superb cushioned properties. Apparently we have a snake-like forked plate here in the Ultrafly, sandwiched within that 36mm stack of foam. Though I would assume in the sample size it's that, in my size it's probably going to be over 40mm. Well, I'm a little perplexed by the weights, I found for the shoe 288 grams, which is typically the sample size, does seem a tad high for such an upper. Is the rubber and that extra Zumex coating really adding on that much weight? I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I think most people though are anxious about the grip that the Ultrafly will offer. In the past, traction on Nike trail shoes has left quite a bit to be desired. In fact, there's only one really that I've particularly enjoyed. Let's hope it's some type of new compound with a better traction offering. The last couple I've tried have been really slippery on anything that's smooth. And you may say, well, what's smooth out there on the trails? Well, I do run in an area which is, you know, mud paths and stuff, and then you've got some slabs of stone, and they can get quite slippery when they're wet. And the uh, last couple of Nike shoes I tried out of the trail variety weren't great. It appears we have virgin Zumex foam here, none of that crushed up scrap stuff. Nothing from the factory floor here, so that's always a good sign. Looking forward to this one, the Nike Zumex Ultrafly. Third up today is the second iteration of a Puma shoe, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. I really love the Deviate Nitro 2, that's a real winner in my book. Does lots and lots of things very well. We have even more of that awesome Nitro Elite formula here though, this being the update to the out and out carbon lightweight racer beast from Puma. It really was an underrated shoe, that first version. In the 2023 update, we have a new upper mesh material. It's different to that super thin yet flexible stuff found on the Farstar Nitro Elite. Profile of the shoe is also more traditional in appearance, certainly with the same upper language used on the more everyday Deviate model. We still have a nice big dollop of Puma grip though on the outsole. I know that's going to make lots of runners out there very, very happy. I am one of those runners in fact because Puma grip is amongst some of the best outsole material. If you haven't run in it, go out and get yourself some. Just put it underneath your foot and try it out. Though I would suggest there's a slightly thicker application of that Puma Grip stuff than we had on the original version of this shoe. This could certainly make the Deviate Nitro Elite 2 from Puma one of the more versatile racing models that we can get our hands on this year. As you know, the racing here in the UK tends to go on multiple different surfaces. You need some reasonably good traction. Any minute you could be doing a road half and be on a nice tarmac road, then go to concrete, then some mossy, muddy areas, perhaps a quick kilometre on some grass, slippery, wet, muddy hills, you know, all of it's thrown in there on a UK road half marathon. Heaven knows when this one drops, though it does seem to be loaded up on a few of Puma's websites over in Europe. I don't think it'll be too long though that we have to wait considering the second iteration of many of Puma's other running shoes have already been released. They've been knocking around for a few months now. Big on my list of running shoes coming in 2023, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. I got one more for you guys, number four. Last on my Marty McFly running shoe journey into the future in the Vauxhall Velux is the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Now, this is possibly the most insane looking shoe that I've seen in a long time, a long time. Perhaps since when the Puma Fast R models were unveiled, this is something of a long time quest to try out. I hope I finally will be able to in 2023. I mean, you've got a very weight relieved upper there. It does remind me of some sandals that my dad used to wear in the 1980s. It's like a midfoot strap section there. It's almost clog-like, I suppose. A clog midsole and then a sandal-like upper. That's the future, guys. Some info on the internet suggests it's a new version of Power Run PB, though. I am interested to see what actually makes up this midsole when it does get released. Perhaps it's a non-pallet-like version of that PBAX material. That would be one of the first we've seen aside from Zoom X. We got an 8mm drop and a 40mm height in the heel, which will make it way over that in my size 11 UK. Perhaps up towards the Asics Gel Nimbus 25, which had about 44mm. People didn't believe me, but now Asics have put out some information and 
Now people believe me about the stack height on that one. Apparently the Endorphin Elite is only going to weigh 204 grams or 7.2 ounces. Though I don't know what size that weight is for. It could be that it's for a very, very small size. You never know. It could be the sample size, in which case it's going to be a very, very light shoe. Let's not forget that that maximally stacked Prime X is like 300 odd grams in my UK size 11. So if Sockney can bring it in under that, it could be a goer. I think what we have here is a more lockdown orientated upper as we do in the Prime X from Adidas because with the stack height being more than we get in the Endorphin Pro 3, you really have to have a focus on keeping the foot on that midsole bed. As such, I do believe that the Endorphin Elite from Saucony will be a little bit heavier than the Endorphin Pro 3. So this is my four additional interesting shoes launching in 2023. A weird bunch of trail shoes, carbon plates, rubber lugs and mesh. I wonder which of them will live up to the hype and make some waves with the runners in 2023. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on these down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I've been doing some faster running today and to help facilitate that, I turn to good old Lemmy and Motorhead. Go and check out No Sleep Till Hammersmith. It's got a fantastic version of my favorite Motorhead track on there called Bomber. The guitar playing is just frenetic here, as is the use of the double kick drum pedal. It kind of sounds a little bit like a man driving in a Nissan Micra down a motorway and bits are starting to fall off a little bit. You know, wing mirror goes, the aerial's gone, hubcap maybe. Absolutely frenetic stuff here. I would assume that Lemmy has maybe drank some Lucasaid. That's probably where he's got the energy from there. Maybe he's also had some avocado on toast as well to get him through the gig. Brilliant stuff here from Motorhead with Bomber from 1981. All that's left for me to say is bonjour. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.